Secretary of State Antony Blinken now reacting to the news that a top Hamas leader has been killed inside the Iranian capital of Tehran. Secretary Blinken stressing the importance of the ongoing ceasefire negotiations between Israel and Hamas and preventing this conflict from spreading beyond the region. Hamas says Ismail Haniyeh was assassinated earlier this morning in Iran. No group claiming responsibility yet, but suspicion does fall on Israel. They have been very open about killing Hamas leaders in retaliation for the attack October 7th. Hours before, the Israeli military said it killed Hezbollah's most senior commander in an airstrike in Beirut. The death of these two major Iranian-backed leaders further fueling concern of a larger war in the Middle East. Joining us now, retired U.S. Navy Captain Pilot Armen Kurdian. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, what role do we know Ismail Hanayai played in the terror group in Hamas? Good morning, Marnie. Hasnie was their political leader, so he is very high up. He has been involved uh, in Hamas for an exceptionally long time, uh, one almost going back to its founding. So his knowledge, his breadth of knowledge and his influence within the organization was absolutely massive. Uh, hence, he was invited by Iran to uh, attend the inauguration of their new president. Uh, taking him out is Israel's sign that they are trying to take back the pace of escalation and control the flow of events that are actually happening. Uh, right now, you know, Israel has been trying to get to a ceasefire, trying to get their hostages back on terms that would be acceptable uh, to, to Israel. Uh, however, uh, with uh, U.S. calls of restraint and, <clears throat> and other situations happening internally politically to Israel, uh, they found themselves sometimes trying to walk a tightrope, which is almost barely there. So I think what they decided with the taking out Hosnia and also Shakur in uh, Beirut is a signal that Israel is done playing around and it's going to go after leadership until uh, these guys come to the table. What does retaliation from Iran look like and how does both Israel and the U.S. prepare and posture for that? This could be very interesting. So there's a number of ways. We've seen uh, Israel launch a large missile strike against uh, our base in Iran. We saw uh, of course, uh, the the massive drone and missile uh, attack over 350 some odd uh, you know, vehicles of various sorts going after uh, Israel when the U.S., uh, Jordan, UAE uh, and Israel all came together to defend the country. Uh, it's possible that um, Iran could uh, could could do one of these these things again. They could perhaps leverage their uh, cyber uh, attack capabilities trying to take out some of uh, Israel's command and control, uh, some targeted attack possibly to open a narrow window within which uh, some missiles could potentially get through. So they have options. The question is whether they will actually undertake those options. If they do, does Israel come right back or does Israel uh, say, you know, you tried to hit us once, it didn't work, you tried to hit us again, it, it, it didn't work, uh, and we're just going to sort of let you uh, scream and shout, but move along our merry way. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.